Hi, I'm David Scranton, and thanks for clicking this video. Today, we're talking about ways to make your retirement plan more resilient. And I'm here with Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services, as well as Tim Sparks, president of Sparks Financial Group, a retirement income store in Lexington, Kentucky. Tim, thanks for being back with us. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. Tim, it's great to see you. Um, in your experiences, do you think people appreciate how important it is to plan for financial resilience in retirement? Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. Um, it seems like uh, we're getting a lot of calls, uh, you know, from the radio and uh, from the, even from the webinars as of recent, uh, you know, trying to look for a way to, uh, and, you know, this message of investing for income uh, is really resonating with people and, and they're wanting to know, uh, you know, more about it. And, uh, and it, it gives them the, uh, once we start meeting and start having conversations, it gives them that, uh, you know, that aha moment, I call it. Uh, where they're uh, excited, you know, maybe this is the, the the route that they need to take. Sure. So instinctually, your customers and people in the ge income generation age range will feel the need to be resilient. It's your job, though, to point out some of the most common reasons that a retirement plan might lack resiliency. And what are some of those common reasons, Tim? Well, what I see today a lot is people lack... Uh, <clears throat> knowledge of the of the markets and how they work and uh, what i see a lot of is everything is skewed toward growth and not understanding the you know the negative uh, aspects of what uh, uh, and or profound effect that i see and we all know of spending principle especially early on in retirement Sure, absolutely. Give, but give us an example, Tim, of financial resilience from your own experiences. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, we meet with people quarterly, and a lot of times people, when they first come in, uh, it, you know, they everything sounded really good. And I think a lot of people just, you know, jump right in with uh, I call blind faith decisions and and go ahead and uh, move forward with us. And, uh, what I want to make sure of is uh, when I meet with them quarterly, especially as those first three and six months down the road, when we do our client reviews that, uh, our clients get it, so to speak, because they don't really understand how income, you know, we talk about that free, reliable income source that's coming in regardless of what the markets may do. So what are some of the other things in your experience outside of how their money's invested that you think people need to focus on that, that may be things they didn't focus on that caused them to have too little financial resilience last March when COVID-19 hit? Well, uh, you know, when the markets went down 35% last year, uh, we immediately reached out to our own clients and uh, also uh, for my own satisfaction uh, of, uh, you know, just, just, you know, because we're all kind of nervous going through uh, the volatility that we faced last year. And sometimes I tell people, it's like Fred Sanford used to say, uh, 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 Elizabeth, I'm coming to meet you. And I'll yeah. kind of say that in a laughing way, you know, that, uh, and they, and they get it because they all, uh, you know, have that uh, sigh for a moment. But uh, I even had clients that would call and say, uh, I need income. And it felt really good uh, to know that they were getting income, really income from interest and dividends and not having to rely on me having to sell shares to create that income for them. Yeah, obviously, when you try to engineer income, it usually doesn't end very well. So, uh, and I know you're an expert at uh, educating people about how to get income the right way. So, Tim. Thanks again for being with us. It's, uh, as usual, it's always good to have you back. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. For more interviews with income specialists around the country, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this interview, give us a thumbs up.